I was thinking happy Samadhi breath meditation. So I thought I would uh, perhaps uh, bring that today. And instead of the loving kindness, which we've been, which is wonderful, and we've been practicing it all this time, and um, I, I think this can be a useful, it is a very useful meditation for uh, different uh, kinds of people also. And uh, it is very, very, very close to the loving kindness that we've been doing. And um, but so, some people sometimes have a bit of a hard time bringing up the feeling of love. And um, there are other ways and techniques which I realize that uh, I uh, haven't provided <laughs> so far. <laughs> so uh, to today, tonight, um, we'll start with a guided... Um, I'm hesitant to call it breath meditation because this has been interpreted uh, in all kinds of ways, but um, how the Buddha taught um, relaxing into natural awareness of body and mind and cultivating joy. Using the breath as a reminder uh, to constantly develop and cultivate this and this is very wonderful tool especially the Buddha said uh, loving kindness should be developed for abandoning impatience anger um, all these nasty feelings but um, the calming the mind and uplifting the mind with joy th with each breath the, that breath meditation he said was particularly helpful to uh, uh, release thoughts, release the thinking, the thinking mind. And so we'll begin with that and tonight will be the, the Bahu Vidaniya Sutta from the, it's the um, many kinds of feelings, um, the discourse on many kinds of feelings which will explain a uh, deeper uh, states of meditation and how each stage, each stage is more blissful and uplifted than the other. And all the way up to Nibbana. And tonight will be a little bit more of a retreat talk because um, first, I haven't done this talk in a while and um, I wanted to give it to uh, the retreat but uh, seven days is not long enough and we have a retreat, uh, a person on retreat today so this will be helpful reminder and so I invite you to take a comfortable position Any position that you feel at ease, that you feel comfortable, which you feel naturally aware, of course having an up, upright spine and back will help in the long run. This will help staying awake and aware but it is not mandatory and so you can really take the posture that you like the most and just relax and smile you can even take a deep breath Whatever happened to you today, let it go.
whatever plans you're making for after this short session or perhaps tomorrow or next week let it all simply fall away for now and smile and just breathe And notice if there is any tension in your body. And relax any tension. And the breath here is only used as a reminder to relax the tension in the body, breathing in, and to relax the tension, breathing out. Breathing in, relaxing, breathing out, relaxing. No need to force anything. This is very, very natural. In fact, this is the opposite of forcing this is letting go, relaxing. And smile. You might perhaps notice that as you calm down, as you relax, the tension in your body, Pasambhayankaya Sankarang, the Buddha said, calming down all the tension in the body. You might notice that awareness opens up slowly tension in the body is also tension in the mind and as we let go of the tension in the body breathing in breathing out we also let go of the tension in the mind breathing in breathing out with a smile. And relax into the naturally occurring awareness of your own body. Now the awareness of body is always there. We don't need to do anything. In fact, is when we stop doing things that we become more aware of it. And so relax into this blissful awareness of your own body with a smile.
and breathe in joy, breathe out joy. In Pali, this is Piti Patisangwadi, experiencing joy on the in breath and experiencing joy on the out breath. How? Smiling. The next step is to experience happiness, breathing in, and to experience happiness, breathing out. Sukha Patisangwadi. And the fastest way to do that, to experience joy and to experience happiness, breathing in and breathing out, is to simply smile. Keeping it simple. Even if you don't believe in the smile at first, keep smiling. It will slowly make its way. Breathing in, relaxing. Breathing out, relaxing. Breathing in, smile. Breathing out, smile. The Buddha explained on many occasions that joy and tranquility come together. And now there might be all kinds of mental activity and distractions in the mind. All kinds of monkeys jumping here and there from that branch to that other branch. The mind doing whatever it wants. Simply relax. The Buddha said, Chitta Sankarang Pati Sangwadi. Simply experience these mental processes, breathing in and breathing out.
not engaging in them. Simply knowing relaxing, smiling as we breathe. If you've practiced in any kind of one-pointed breath practice before, notice the tension that arises from trying to focus on one particular point. This is not the goal here. The goal is to let go. The goal is to relax into the naturally occurring awareness of body and mind, which is happy, light, joyful, with a smile. practicing unlimited awareness, the Buddha called. Apamano. Of body and mind, not holding, just smiling and letting go. and calming, calming down the distractions, the tensions in the mind. Pasambhayang citta sankharang, calming down the tension in the mind. All the processes, just smile, breathe, relax. And as we do this, the awareness of mind will slowly become clearer. Why? Because all these disturbances and distractions in the mind are simply blurring our vision. And as we relax and experience joy and happiness, these will simply fade away. Awareness of mind is not something that we do. It is something that happens through the practice. It is the result of experiencing joy and letting go. It is something that we can observe or know, but it is not something that we can do.
And so breathing in, uplifting the mind with joy. Breathing out, uplifting the mind with joy. Smile. If the mind flows out, let it go, relax, smile. Notice the little tension that arises when the mind wants to leave or is distracted and relax. And as we do this, the mind will become collected. Samadha hang chittang. Unified. And so with each breath, we gather the mind with joy. And we allow it to unwind, untangle with each breath. We mochayang chittang, untangling. And we joyfully, continually relax and let go and smile. Anichanupasi, seeing the changing nature of our mind, constantly changing, constantly changing, and we simply not hold to anything, we just let it, let it change, and continue to relax and smile. Anichanupasana. Simply be aware of the flow of change. with a smile. Viraga Nupasi, contemplating appeasement 
not holding, not clinging. With each breath, with a smile, Nirodhanu Pasi, contemplating release. complete disengagement, joyful release. Patini Saganupasi, the last one. Being aware of breaking free, contemplating breaking free. And this is all very happy and very calm. It starts with the bliss or the joy that arises from detachment. We wake a jang piti sukkang. Then, as the mind becomes collected, it goes into the bliss of the collected mind. Samadhi jang piti sukkang. The bliss of mental development. Breathing in joy, breathing out joy. This is happy meditation. The Buddha taught happy meditation. When the distractions in the mind, when the hindrances in the mind, outward distractions, impatience, doubt, anxiety, have left the mind, the mind is very happy, naturally. That is Dhamma, that is the nature. The hindrances oppress the mind. They pull the mind down. But when we break free from them, there is nothing but bliss in the mind. Pamo jang jayati, then gladness arises. 
Pamuditasa piti jayati. From that gladness comes bliss or joy. Piti manasa kayam pasambati. With bliss in the mind, the body becomes calm naturally. Pasadakayo sukkang patisangwedi. With a calm body, one experiences nothing but happiness, ease, delight. Sukino chittang samadhyati. And these are the words of the Buddha. The happy mind naturally goes into samadhi, harmonious mental collectedness. very happy from the beginning until the end happy 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 We could stay for a very long time in this wonderful meditation. But I will carry on with the second section of this Dhamma session. And I invite you to carry this blissful, uplifted, joyful mind which is now very aware and very attentive, naturally. And to simply listen to these wonderful words from the Buddha. And like I said, this is uh, the Bahu Vidaniya Sutta. It's the many kinds of feeling that's in the middle length discourses of the Buddha and this is number 59 but I'm reading from a translation that is uh, the same sutta in the collected um, discourses Samyutta Nikaya it's the Panchakanga the discourse to Panchakanga and so this discourse comes twice in the Nikayas it's a very important discourse and it's a very wonderful discourse on, uh, on the nine levels of meditations which we call jhanas and the Buddha explains how each of these states for one happen consecutively and each of them is more blissful and uplifted than the other and this is the road map to this meditation that the Buddha taught. It's always good to have a road map when we go on a little journey. And so it begins with the carpenter Panchakanga visiting the venerable Udayi and having approached him and paying respects. He sits down to the side and asks, 
Bhante, how many kinds of feeling were explained by the awakened one? Now, as you probably noticed already, uh, there's a lot of numbers in Buddhism, and uh, there's uh, a lot of numbers uh, around the, the kinds of feelings also, and that's why the carpenter is a little bit uh, confused, and he wants to know what the Buddha was saying. The Awakened One explained three kinds of feelings, carpenter, pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings, and neutral feelings. And which is the usual exposition of the Buddha. Whatever we experience, any kind of sensations or any kind of feeling at each of the sense door, which means the eye, the, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, the mind, each arising from contact when there is sense impingement contact, there will arise a feeling, whether pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And this is what we're referring to here. These are the three kinds of feelings explained by the Awakened One. When this was said, the carpenter Panchakanga said to the elder Udayi, But Bhante Udayi, the Awakened One did not speak about three kinds of feelings. He spoke about two kinds of feelings, pleasant and unpleasant. Bhante, the Awakened One, said that the, these neutral feelings are delightful happiness, partaking of peace. Which is also true, but the Buddha explained things in many kinds of ways so that all kinds of people with different backgrounds would understand what he was saying. And so sometimes there arose some confusion around certain topics, and this is one example. And these neutral feelings are basically when something arises and either our mind is developed and well developed and it remains unshaken and very steady in that blissful calm that we've developed. And that is called, that is what Panchakanga is referring to here. But it could also be simply. Uh, not knowing, indifference, and that is a uh, not so good kind of neutral feeling because we simply do not care, and that is very different. The equanimity from mental development and meditation is different than indifference, and that is very uh, good to understand. For a second time and a third time, the carpenter Panchakanga asks the venerable Udayi, and they repeat the same thing. And never could the elder Udayi's explanation be received by the carpenter, nor could the carpenter's explanation be received by the elder Udayi. Then Ananda heard all of this friendly conversation and went to the Buddha to ask. The statement of the elder Udayi who the carpenter Panchakanga would not accept was true. And the statement of the carpenter Panchakanga, who the elder Udayi would not accept, was also true. Ananda, I spoke of two kinds of feelings in one exposition. I spoke of three kinds of feelings in another exposition. I spoke of five kinds of feelings in another exposition. I spoke of six kinds of feeling in another exposition. I spoke of 18 kinds of feeling in another exposition. I spoke of 36 kinds of feelings in another exposition. And I spoke of 108 kinds of feelings in another exposition. Now, this can uh, trigger the curious mind. And basically, like I said, um, the Buddha had all kinds of ways to explain his teaching. and. Um, the Dhamma remained the same, the truth behind it was the same, uh, but the expositions and the ways of exposition sometimes differ. And he says, I have taught the Dhamma in all of these different ways, Ananda. 
when the Dhamma has been taught by me in all these different ways, even if it was well spoken and clearly expressed each time, it is to be expected that some will not approve, some will not concede, and some will not appreciate. This is also a beautiful little blink, um, glimpse on um, uh, tolerance, patience, and appreciation, gratitude, and respect which are very uh, helpful on the path. These people will be living at strife, disputing and arguing, continually attacking each other with pierce piercing words. I have taught the Dhamma in all of these different ways, Ananda. Sometimes we get into arguments and both sides are just true and we simply fail to notice. <laughs> and so compassion and forgiveness is always a good, good tool to have in the back pocket. When the Dhamma has been taught by me in all these different ways, well spoken and clearly expressed each time, it is to be expected that some will approve, some will concede, and some will appreciate. These people will be living in unity, in mutual joy, without disputes, blending together like milk and water, continually looking upon one another with caring eyes. And now he gets into the explanation a bit what he means by pleasant feelings and unpleasant feelings and these uh, these neutral feelings that come from um, mental development, uh, uplifted mind. And so he will break down here the lowest kind of uh, pleasant feeling or happiness and build up to the highest. Ananda, there are these five qualities of outward attraction. There are forms perceived by the eye which are desired, loved, seductive and enticing, mingled with desire and exciting. Sounds perceived by the ear, odors perceived by the nose, flavors perceived by the tongue, tangibles perceived by the body. Which are desired and loved, seductive and enticing, mingled with desire and exciting. These are the five qualities of outward attraction, Ananda. Ananda, the happiness of, and delight that arises rooted upon these five qualities, this is called the happiness of craving. Ananda, those who say, this is the highest peace, happiness, and delight that can be experienced, I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond this, more exalted than this. And what is that other kind of happiness? And now we've uh, talked a little bit about We've seen the happiness that is fairly uh, uh, ephemeral from the senses, and we get into the meditation happiness, which he will wonderfully explain here. Here, Ananda, disengaged from outward desires and detached from unwholesome mental states, these are all the hindrances, outward distractions, anger, impatience, jealousy, worry, still attended by thinking and reflection, with the blissful happiness born of mental detachment, someone understands and abides in the first level of meditation. Now with what we've been practicing when we are carrying the metta, as soon as we bring up the feeling of love, the feeling of love inside our heart, at that time, there is no anger, there is no impatience, there is love. And at that time, we are in the first level of meditation. And so, 
whenever there is a distraction that arises, whether it's something, it's a thought outwardly, or it's anger or something, we're pulled out. And as soon as we let go, we see it with wisdom, we see the tension that arises from it, and we let it go and come back to the love, the boundless love, or wherever we are in this practice of love. It can be accompanied by an object because there is thinking and reflection still. Yet there can be thinking about someone that you really like, a puppy, a kitten, to bring up the feeling, which is wonderful. And that is still part of the first level of meditation, the Buddha explains here. With the blissful happiness born of mental detachment is once we let go of all the hindrances, the mind becomes naturally very happy and blissful. And the more we cultivate that, the more we walk towards this, the stronger these will become. These uh, jhana factors that we call, these um, supports, these things that make up the this level of meditation. This is that other kind of happiness which is beyond and more exalted. Ananda, those who say this is the highest peace, happiness and delight that can be experienced, I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because Ananda, there are another kinds of happiness beyond this and more exalted than this. Here, Ananda, with the calming of thinking and reflection, with inner tranquilization, one's mind becomes unified, without thinking and reflection, with the blissful happiness born of mental stillness. Samadhi. Someone understands and abides in the second level of meditation. Now, as we bring up the feeling it will start to stick a little longer. Uh, if we can do this boundlessly, that's even better. But at this point, the object or um, the visualizing someone or uh, a situation falls away because we stop thinking at this point. Thinking becomes a little too coarse for the mind to be carried on at this point. And this is simply the natural process of samatha vipassana, tranquility and wise understanding. That um, as we calm down into the feeling of boundless love, for example, the mind will start untangling itself and it will start become freer and it will start really enjoying this. And so thinking and reflection at this point will fall away naturally because it feels a little too heavy. The mind simply wants to stay with just feeling, feeling of love, boundlessly. And it doesn't want to think anymore. It's, the thinking is too coarse. And then with inner tranquilization, this is also called uh, self-confidence. We, we acquire a lot of self-confidence when we get there at that second level because the first one is still a bit blurry because of all the thinking and the mind is still fairly active. But now the, there is samadhi, there is mental unity that is happening and collectedness of mind. And this comes with great, great joy and great happiness. And so... It is translated as self-confidence because we gain a lot of understanding and confidence at that level. This is that other kind of happiness which is beyond this and more exalted. And the joyful happiness or the blissful happiness at this point changes from the blissful happiness of simply letting go of the five sense distractions and it moves toward, towards, after we've done this for a while, 
the mind just simply becomes collected and this becomes very blissful and happy and so from detaching now the mind is becoming uh, collected and this is the source of the happiness at this point and this is very noticeable this is not uh, subtle <laughs> and so he continues Ananda those who say this is the highest peace happiness and delight that can be experienced I do not agree with them why is that because there is a kind of happiness beyond this more exalted than this here Ananda with the calming of bliss abiding in mental steadiness present and fully aware experiencing happiness within his body or her body that state which the righteous ones or the awakened ones describe steady presence of mind this is a pleasant abiding a person understands and abides in the third level of meditation now, this is the third jhana and in the third jhana if we are using the loving kindness the boundless love now the feeling will calm down quite a bit and that's good it becomes more steady more sustainable we need less energy to put it out and it is cleaner clearer and more constant but it is also more subtle it is calmer and the excitement is kind of fading down and there is great joy but it's not ex an excited kind of joy it's an exalted kind of joy a completely open kind of joy and at this point we can call it closer to bliss so the bliss and the joy doesn't disappear the bliss and the joy PT is an awakening factor is a support of awakening it will be there until the end but here it calms down quite a bit the excitement abiding in mental steadiness present and fully aware this is when I say that the feeling of loving-kindness will become very steady this is what it means and fully aware and present simply means that the mind is released to such an extent that it has calmed down quite a bit and it becomes very clear very is fully aware it's not aware of one particular thing it's just fully aware that's the beauty of it and it's called sati sampajanga experiencing ease or happiness within the body and we've seen that earlier with bliss in the mind the body becomes calm and this that state which the the awakened one described as steady presence of mind this is a pleasant abiding those who have entered the stream and seen the dhamma very often abide in this place where the mind is very very steady and very very uplifted happy but constantly it's not distracted and this is hard to we don't get to experience that very often because mind gets distracted to all kinds of things but when we get to this point the mind is steady in joy and so it's very strong uh, joy and it's continual so it's quite a wonderful place to to draw your happiness from this is that other kind of happiness which is beyond and more exalted Ananda those who say this is the highest peace happiness and delight that can be experienced I do not agree with them oh this is getting interesting 
Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond this and more exalted than this. Here, Ananda, letting go of the notions of happiness and unhappiness, with the earlier settling of mental gladness and affliction, with neither pain nor pleasure, purified by unmoving presence. Someone understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. And now the mind becomes simply so steady and so, so strong in, in, and present um, that the concept of happiness or unhappiness or uh, excitement or anything like that, it simply it becomes irrelevant at this point because the mind is so steady and strong into bliss and happiness that uh, these things kind of fall away in the background. <laughs> um, and this is where the feeling of loving kindness becomes fairly... Uh, it, that is the limit. The Buddha said this is the limit of the loving kindness or the boundless love. Because at this point there will be the mind is so released that even thinking about bringing up the loving kindness is too coarse and this is the last station where we still have awareness of body and we are going into mind in the next ones and so we cannot carry this these very heavily charged feelings into uh, mind because mind is uh, very subtle and released to enter the uh, the higher jhanas. Uh, the mind needs to be very very clear and free. And so at this point the feeling of loving kindness is barely perceptible. It's still there, but it's very expanded, very, very big, and very, very subtle. And it, it is basically simply bringing us to this place where we can simply step into the world of the mind. That is that other kind of happiness, which is beyond this and more exalted. Ananda, those who say this is the highest peace, happiness and delight that can be experienced, I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond this, more exalted than this. And what is it? Here, having entirely gone beyond all perceptions of form or shape, this includes body, with the awareness of sensory impact fading away, this means any kind of contact at any of the sense doors, but mainly body, turning away from the awareness of plurality. Now, the mind becomes so collected when we get into the mind, the mind becomes it's so pure and so collected. There is, no, there is no perception of any kind of shape because this would mean complicated. <laughs> this would be uh, too complicated, too gross for the mind. Now the mind is just really, really unified. And it is starting to become only aware of mind. And at this point, if we want to carry on the Brahma Viharas, we have to change to, or it will change naturally, to either compassion. And this is a state where the Buddha spent uh, two hours every day in. He went into uh, this 
plane of endless space and radiated compassion to all living beings for one hour in the morning and one hour, I think it was, in the evening. And it's not a bad place to be. <laughs> Knowing there is endless space. And so the mind, in, in this way, it will become very collected. And also this perception of endless space arises and now we move from if there was feeling the loving kindness from the body out in the all directions now this feeling it feels like it moves up into the head basically and this changes into compassion or simply joy the loving kindness is too intense at this point to carry on further. And either compassion or joy are possible at this point. And this means the compassion and joy as the Brahma Viharas. Calm also is uh, possible, but these are radiant state. We are, s and at this point, it is radiating from mind and we don't since there's no real awareness of body it's it's still there if we direct our minds to body we can feel body we can see body but the mind is so free at this point that we we fully um, step into the mind and the mind feels like it's endless space at the beginning and that's how we know we've we're entering mind and so continuing with the brahma viharas would be to continue with compassion which is quite a notch down from love and uh, in terms of uh, strength of the feeling but it's still in that endless space we don't only thinking only directing only inclining our mind to radiant compassion for example or radiant joy or radiant calm at this point we only need to incline the mind to this state and it happens we don't need to feel it from the body out it's simply happening we just think joy and it simply happens <laughs> so this is very easy now This is that other kind of happiness which is beyond this and more exalted. Ananda, those who say, this is the highest peace, happiness and delight that can be experienced, I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond this and more exalted than this. Here, Ananda, having gone entirely beyond the plane of endless space, knowing there is endless consciousness. One enters and abides, or understands and abides in the plane of endless consciousness. At this point, the awareness, the expansive, broad awareness of endless space will simply kind of fade it's not something that we do, it's something that happens naturally as we let go of the distractions, as we let go. For those who practice TWIM, this is called the six R's, and we relax, we let go, and we come back to the wholesome, whether it's radiant mm -hmm. joy at this point. And the Buddha said, this is the limit of radiant compassion 
is the plane of endless space and the limit of radiant joy is the plane of endless consciousness. And so here we are moving into subtler and subtler states and the Brahma Viharas are, um, have carried us through all this way and they are also calming down and fading to leave more space for the re release mind. <clears throat> and so at this point, the, this plane of endless consciousness is quite important because first we will, we will change into simply radiant joy all the time. It's simply radiant joy. And this is the, associated with the Abhasa Raloka, where the radiant devas are. <laughs> this is what the radiant uh, devas feed on. This is how they live uh, from that completely broad, expansive uh, joy, radiant joy. And from this place on, we get to see what is this endless consciousness, this endless, um, what does this mean, in fact? <laughs> And uh, at this point, we start to see that consciousness starts to break up. It starts to be, we see that this stream of consciousness is just endless and it's happening on its own. And I am not, or we are not doing this. It is simply happening. And so, as we relax into this state, the mind kind of loses this awareness of space and it becomes really simply about this consciousness, this presence. And it becomes like a, a, a movie uh, going on very slow. We start to see each frames one by one. And this is going very, very, very fast. And we continue letting go of that because this has still a little bit more tension and that state is very important because we get to know that this is impersonal I am not doing this stream of consciousness it is happening on its own and this is quite a profound understanding of anatta or the nature of non-self This is that other kind of happiness which is beyond and more exalted. Ananda, those who say this is the highest peace, happiness and delight that can be experienced, I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond and more exalted than this. This is starting to be interesting. And here he goes explaining the plane of nothingness. Having entirely gone beyond the plane of endless consciousness, knowing there is nothing, <laughs> one understands and abides in the plane of nothingness. Now, sometimes there can be some confusion between uh, these very subtle states, uh, between the endless space, endless consciousness, and nothingness, because they are so subtle. And to really see the difference between them can, can take a little bit as we uh, uh, release the mind to even greater depths. And at this point, now, when we see this breaking up of awareness of consciousness and we see this is not me doing this, we really let go of that. And we experience an, a deeper release, a deeper bliss of release of mind at this point and what happens next is simply not much <laughs> there is in that in that plane there is i is still there this very 
very clear awareness and at this point there is only this is the limit of radiant calm or what is usually translated as equanimity as the last Brahma Vihara and so at this point this is the limit of the where the Brahma Viharas go and which is quite far and at this point we take if we use the sequence with the Brahma Viharas we take radiant calm as object of meditation and because the mind is just really really subtle and radiant calm is the state where the mind feels more natural in it feels that there's not so much tension and it's very released and blissful and some little distractions may arise in there and but we get to see them very very soon we get to see movements of the mind whatever the mind leans or inclines towards it starts to be very apparent and we can this is a very precious opportunity to release and liberate the deepest states the deepest layers of our minds sankharas and so as soon as we see these conditioned mental behaviors arising which are just the beginning of uh, mental movements we can in fact let them go and not engage in them and constantly this is what we've been doing this whole time but now we um, we carry it on much deeper this is that other kind of happiness which is beyond this and more exalted and in this state is great 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 happiness and this is not ha excited happiness but the mind is so free and liberated great great happiness is found there and we start someone can start understanding that this this path is pretty good <laughs> and that brings greater and greater fruits as we go along Ananda those who say this is the highest peace happiness and delight that can be experienced I do not agree with them why is that because Ananda there is another kind of happiness beyond this and more exalted here Ananda having entirely gone beyond the plane of nothingness one ab understands and abides in the plane between awareness and its limit this is also called neither perception or non-perception uh, this is where now the mind has become so released and so bright and open and clear and any kind of little movement starts to be very uh, apparent and this is where the mind is so clear it's like a pol polished glass and is so polished and clear that we can barely see it anymore this eye can barely witness anymore and so we start losing some uh, some bits <laughs> here and there because this I awareness this presence becomes so clear that it disappears slowly 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 and this is the Buddha says you don't really know you're in that state until you come out because how do you know that awareness was gone for a little bit well you have to come back to awareness to see that <laughs> and this is getting a little subtle and tricky but it does happen and it is quite a wonderful state and we need we need to very really understand that this this 
this uh, this state, this place is happiness that is that we've never experienced before. This is this is very close to the Buddha's kind of happiness, the happiness of awakening, and this is quite wonderful at this state. At this state. Now, some people might feel like they are falling asleep but being awake at the same time. This is also where we will learn to sharpen the seven awakening factors so that they are very sharp and clear and in line because a little bit of dullness of mind will lean towards... uh, negligence or carelessness it will simply the awareness will dull out a little bit and so little movements of the mind are going to arise and if we put too much effort then there is going to be tension and so then it's a very 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 fine line there it's not something to be forced it's something to be understood with wisdom and so we really learn to see the tiniest little bits of tension in the mind as they arise and even before that and to not engage in them at all and to completely relax and disengage from that Ananda, those who say This is the highest peace, happiness, and delight that can be experienced. I do not agree with them. Why is that? Because, Ananda, there is another kind of happiness beyond this and more exalted than this. What is it, this other kind of happiness? And now we are talking about Niroda, or what is called Nibbana, and the, this is literally the end goal of uh, the Buddha's teaching and uh, awakening, complete release. And this does not mean that someone is fully awakened when they enter that state, but that just experiencing Nibbana needs a lot of wisdom from that person. And... Um, that person usually that person becomes one who has seen the Dhamma uh, and enters the stream going entirely beyond the plane between awareness and its limit a monk understands or a person understands and abides in the release from experiential awareness now this is called Niroda and this is where the mind has gotten so clear, so bright and so open that there is, it is barely perceptible anymore. And it, so that is going beyond experiential awareness. And uh, this is called Sanya Vedayita Niroda. And the only these two last stages of meditation we only can be aware that we have entered these states once we come out because uh, there is no it is going beyond mind that's what Buddha means Buddha is not a name for a person it's a quality it is the quality of a person who has gone beyond the mind and this is exactly what this state is so we go beyond awareness and there is this uh, very common misunderstanding uh, nowadays that Buddhism is mindfulness practice in fact not not really it is going beyond mindfulness it is going beyond the mind yes we cultivate mindfulness through wise practice which means letting go 
of unwholesome states, letting go of tension, cultivating released states of mind. But the end goal is going beyond the mind. And that is very, very important to understand, that this is the goal of what we're doing. <laughs> and that this cannot be compared in terms of happiness. And the, the happiness that comes from experiencing this depth, drinking this deep in the Dhamma, no happiness in this world can come even close to that. And this is not, this is possible to experience. This is not impossible at all. When one practices in the proper way, with proper training, studying what the Buddha actually said from the suttas themselves, this is completely possible. And so, when we enter, when someone enters this complete release of mind, there is no awareness of it because this, it is going beyond awareness. And so we, I keep saying we, but that's not very accurate. When someone enters that place, the Nibbana element, the Buddha called it. First, it is not that easy to get in there. The mind will, it, it, is, it has too much in it. Uh, it will pull us out <laughs> at the beginning. The, 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 the mind will be pulled back into coarser states because, because it just learned how to get there. And so, uh, some people may be able to stay in there for a long time after, after they've practiced for, for quite a while and understand how to get into that state. But at the beginning, someone is not really likely to stay in that state for very long. It will most likely be uh, a few seconds and maybe a minute. Uh, but, and it is very subtle, and once coming out of that state, this is when we can reflect, we can see, that person can see coming out, there was a leap in awareness, the mind was completely released, and the mind was gone beyond the mind. Well, there was going beyond the mind, Nibbana. And great, great, great bliss arises in, in someone that experiences that. And this is not, um, this is very, uh, very tangible, not, not, not light. And uh, a person can, can know for themselves that this is what happened and The mind has never been that pure, ever, because Nibbana is this complete purity of mind. The mind has to let go of everything to enter this. And so even in, in the best nights of sleeps that we could have experienced, it doesn't even come close to the rest that the mind is getting in these states. Great, great merit, great, great, great merit is done in these states. Any second spent in any of these higher states is very, very meritorious. Very, very a wealth <laughs> of, of merits. And once coming out, someone can, will experience that great relief. Like I have 
very heavy burden has been lifted off their shoulders. The mind has never gotten so pure and so released the first time it experiences that. And coming out of this state, sometimes, usually people will see things very, very clearly at each of the sense doors, but also uh, mostly visual awareness. There will, things will be very, very bright, uh, very detailed. Uh, maybe looking at a at a caterpillar or some leaf and see with clarity that wasn't there before because the mind is was so pure that there is this very 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 clear awareness and so and this this joy this happiness will carry on for quite a while and it will carry on it doesn't it does not fade away it simply becomes more usual <laughs> it becomes more integrated to the life of that person it is uh, it doesn't fade away it simply becomes part of that person and and then y the experiencing that that the three lower fetters are abandoned which is sakaya ditti uh, belief in the personal self that falls off because we've there's been going beyond the mind and so uh, there is no understanding now that there is no self and that uh, there is a place where there is no self there is complete liberation from that and that is the highest bliss Nibbana that is what the Buddha taught and <clears throat> doubt Uchikicha in not all kinds of doubt like should I have cereals this morning or toasts it's more about the Dhamma about the teaching of the Buddha no more doubt in the triple gem Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha become cemented. It's, yes, at this point we know what the Buddha was teaching was true. The Dhamma is true. The Sangha is practicing the right way, the straight way. All of this, all of these wonderful qualities of the triple gem. We know for sure now we've exp that a person has experienced it. So it becomes cemented. It's... it's uh, becomes very strong I think that's what I wanted to say about this <laughs> this is that other kind of happiness which is beyond this and more exalted because of this Ananda those wanderers established in other teachings might ask, the sage Gotama speaks of the release from experiential awareness and declares it as partaking of happiness. How can this be? How can this be said? Which is a fairly good question. This is, uh, this is quite uh, unique to the Buddha's teaching, in fact, uh, not... Uh, not a whole lot of people talked about the release of experiential awareness, which is called Niroda or Nibbana. This is the depth of the Buddha's teaching, and a lot of um, people uh, is hard to understand if we don't practice. It's hard to understand what we're talking about here. <laughs> so, um, this is a very legitimate question. And it loops back to the beginning of the sutta where uh, the Buddha explained all these kinds of feelings and where happiness is taken from. And so usually our notion of happiness is through the five sense faculties. And so this is what the Buddha called the world. 
and we draw our happiness from these sense faculties and this is what we call these pleasant feelings now the buddha explained this whole path to explain what he taught was happiness the happiness of mental development and of nibbana and now it is hard for for other people to understand what what kind of what kind of happiness is that what what does it mean and so when this was asked th when this is asked ananda the wanderers established in other teachings should be answered in this way friend the awakened one does not declare only pleasant feelings as partaking of happiness friend in this way wherever one goes happiness is found whether here or there this is this the truth finder declares as true happiness and so for the stream enterers happiness is steady this is always there wherever we go there wherever some someone will go there is it is not dependent on the senses anymore it is completely released from the senses and therefore it is there all the time and so with this profound discourse I wish you all very good meditation and very wonderful happiness in the Buddha Sasana the Buddha's teaching and progress and drinking the nectar of the Dhamma <laughs> Good. All right. Let's uh, let's share merits. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha Sasana. Sadi, sadi.